What's up? This is Don from Dr. Smoke, and today we've got something pretty exciting. Very exciting. How exciting? Like futuristic exciting. Futuristic? Yeah, I would say so. So the innovators are at it again. Yes, right? they are at GMG. They are. So we've got a, a ledge, which is a current model. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful smoker, but I think we should move on to something a little different. I like change. There's a ledge. We'll call it a ledge 2.0. We don't even know what they're going to call it. But here we go. So we've got a cover on this thing right now. This cover feels different. Feels different because it is UV resistant. It's lined, it's waterproof. Lined, you can see the waterproof lining. Right, what's and it? Breathable. What's this? Breathable, what's breathable. this? What's this? Okay. This is the biggest change I noticed. So the biggest change what, is, what do we oh, got here? it looks like the chimney is out the back. What is up with that? Rear exit. And for all of you wondering if you can get this new cover for your older ledge, you can because again, they've thought about it. Pull and the cover. Pull the cover and now you've got. And then push this one in and swap that over. Exactly. So already just with the cover, we're seeing a lot. It's nice. And everybody deals with their covers fading and they put extra attention into preventing that from happening with these covers and this material. It's a whole new material. And do you think that they thought about anything with the, with the smoker itself? Let's find out. I mean, I can already tell there's a difference, <laughs> right? Let's find out. I'll tell you, the cover's a little easier to take off. Wow, look at this thing. Check that out, Yo, guys. If you have your vehicle blacked out, this is blacked out. Everything's blacked out. I love it. So now we've got these two smokers next to each other. Let's just start right. a side-by-side -side comparison, Ron. What do you want to start it, with, hopper? Let's start with the hopper. Okay, start with the hopper. All right, so you've got the older show hopper Show me here. yours, I'll show you mine. Let's do it. Go for it. All right, so older hopper opens up this way toward the smoker, which can be an issue. And why is that? Thermal covers. If you have your thermal cover on and you try to open that hopper door, it pushes it and it won't stay open. So if you're by yourself and you're trying to put pellets in there, it's a pain. You're one hand on the pellets, one hand on the lid. All right, next change. I see the bottle opener is a little different. Not, not that big of a deal. Right. Uh, you've got a stainless one here or aluminum and mm -hmm. you've got a blacked out version on that side. Yep. Looks like the controllers are the same. So I imagine that we still have the uh, same 12 volt control and you've got your light button too. Right. Uh, hopper window is a little different. Absolutely. This is more of a level hopper window, which is the whole reason for it, is to check your level. So exactly. It's less uh, window space. So part of the hopper is power. Back right. here, we've got, let me turn this around. Back here, we've got the pellet dump. And let's point something out about the pellet dump. Right now, this design, it goes flat with the bottom of the auger. And you've got your 12 volt supply there. And this has been modified. When they first came out with these, they faced the top and water could get in there. So it was changed, the design, so water would actually roll over it. All right. Now, let's take a look at the back of that one. Uh-oh. Where do I plug it in? So the power must be somewhere else. Right. Power is actually... The door is different. The door is different. Why yeah. don't you open that up? Uh, I don't want to open that up. Oh, there's, there's pellets there's in There's pellets okay. in here. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's something we do have to test. It's a different design. Listen, we got to open it up. We have to open it up. Come on, Ron. All right, here, go so for it. So now we're going to open this thing up and see what's different about it. Whoa, it's a tray. <laughs> Woo! Check that out. I think a bucket would have been a better option, but. But. It's a chute that it's comes a down. It's a chute. So now, is this pellet hopper completely empty? It is. Yeah, you would have to push some over, but. Right. I could tell you this design you're not getting water in there. 
And, and you're not because they also put a ledge here for water to come down around the side. Right. Totally redesigned and you're not getting any water into your pellets. Okay. We'll it slides the... back on really nice too. It does. But where do I plug this thing in? All right, so Ron, with this design, you're gonna plug this in at the bottom. And at the bottom is a 12 volt port, like the old one, but also a 115 volt port. That's your standard like C13 computer style that plugs in. So all you guys that have modified your smokers to convert them over to that type of cord, you have an option now, and we're gonna show you right here in this footage, you have an option. You can still use the old style, the cigarette lighter style, I guess you would call that. 12 volt. 12 volt. Because that you still need if you're traveling with this, and it's great for the, the Trek. I'm not sure if the Trek has that yet. Right, we'll or you can swap over to the modified option, which a lot of people switch over to. Exactly. So you have a choice. They gave you a choice, and that's one thing about GMG. They always listen to their customers. They're watching these things that you guys are doing, and they made a change for you, which was one of the biggest changes for a lot of people. Some people won't care, but that's a big deal. Right. What I want to do is grab a tape measure, because then we'll talk about the front shelf and the design. So you can also see different handles. Yep. That's a shorter handle. This is the longer handle. How about the height? What about the height? It's of these easy two? to see the difference in height. Now, I had measured, and I could tell you right now, it's over an inch taller than that one right there. And I believe it's going to be about an inch and a half taller than the older model up to the top here. And as we're talking about that, just lifting up this lid, and just seeing the space that you have, and, and you know, it's more waist height, it's more comfortable. It is, especially for taller people. We've had complaints in the past from taller people that they were cooking down here. This is gonna be a lot more comfortable to cook on because it's, the height is just better. Right. It's, it's just enough. Here's another thing that I noticed, and, and some people may think it's great, some people may not care, but the distance, between the handle and the shelf is two and a half inches on this one. If you're setting food on here and you go to close this, sometimes it'll hit your food or your handle go into your food. That's different on this one. You get more distance. You have three and a half inches on here, which is a really nice height on other brands. They bring the shelf way too low. This is a perfect combination of both, where it's just down enough, so when you put your food on here, it's not in the way. I agree, because it, it does happen. You, you bring ribs out, you bring a brisket out, and the handle's actually hitting the food. Right, this shelf is also folding. It's a little different than that shelf. So you lift that up and drop it. Lift it up uh, and drop on this it. this one, you're just hitting the two buttons and dropping it. Right, this is a, a simpler design, I, I feel. It is and it's less things to have to worry about breaking, and it's strong. So let's just measure, measure the, the difference. Now this is a smaller shelf than the previous model. You've got about 24 inches wide and nine and a half inches deep. The old one, 27 inches wide and about 12 inches deep. So you lose a little bit, but I don't think that's a big deal because you're gonna bring out a tray. You're gonna have right. trays on here. It's gonna carry the weight. I think that's more important than, than the size of the shelf. Plus with your kids running past it, it's less things sticking out for them to run into. Exactly. One other thing I wanted to mention is just the lid, the lid here, uh, the, the shape of it first. Uh, you can see that this is more of a, a peak design. And when you're using the, the racks, you really notice this because it gets in the way. The like headspace. The headspace, it gets in the way of that third rack when you're using an, an aftermarket system like Pimp My Grills. They designed that to have more of a rounded barrel, which, which is great. Yes, there's more height in You've there. You've got more height. You got more height. And, and Even one the other, window design is different. This is a little bit recessed. Right, this is refined. This mm -hmm. is definitely a refined version of, of what this is. And they stuck with the window. Yep. Aesthetically, I think the window looks great. It's cool looking. I like it. You just got to keep it clean. Exactly. So let's open up the smoker. 
And we'll move on to the inside. All right. Whoa, that's a <laughs> lot different. It is, and I'm seeing something in the back there that I, I really like. So they do have a new rack design. It's basically a $39 bar that they sell that mounts to the back of this smoker. Comes with the screws, goes in, and your, your possibilities are limitless with this. So you can see right, that. Right, that's a rib rack. So you can see that it's a rib rack, and this is a patented design, and it's just notches. And, and it's as easy as one, two, three. They go right into the holes. They go right in and, and it's lock supported. In. Locked in. And again, you have a tray. the uh, accessories in this. That would be really nice for salmon. That would be really good for salmon. Because salmon is such a pain to get off of grates. So yep. having a flat cooking surface. Especially the individual fillets. Right. So for fish, that would be really nice. Yep. Doing uh, and smoked cheeses. Because don't forget, we've got that 12 volt system. We can control that fan only, mm -hmm. put some ice trays in here and smoke cheese with a smoke tube. I can think of a lot of different creations that you could come up with to use these racks. And oh I'm my sure, God. I'm sure people are gonna have all kinds of things that they're doing with them. And, and it's such a simple design. GMG listens, this is exactly what we get. You know, a brand right. new product. And I'm, I'm also seeing the adapters for the rotisserie on the side here. So this is gonna be the same setup. I'm guessing that the old rotisseries can convert over to these new ones. I believe that's the same width. It's just the height that's different. You still have your light on the inside here. Here's your bracket for the rotisserie. And uh, what else do you notice on the inside? Anything else? I mean- So they still kept the light too. Yep. So you've got the light inside. The uh, internal dimensions are the same. Again, now this rack systems. The smokestack is coming out of the back, and there's a reason for that. Exactly. They've had engineers figure out what the best exit point on the smoker is. And with the way that these work, it's almost convection, where the air is circulating inside of here. So instead of exiting out the side here, the engineers found that it's best to exit out of the back right in this spot here. So it's not just for looks, which I think it is really cool. I think it looks great. The angle that it comes out. For function, this is gonna actually cook different than the other models does. So I'm curious to see how, they, how different that they actually cook. Right, and, and I'm thinking that you might get better ventilation with this too, because you know when you got this design for the older smoker, there's a holdup point here. And I've had grease build up in this, this mm -hmm. spot here. So it will be interesting. It's, it's one less thing to clean. Right, these, the these take every, you know, every few months I, I take mine off and I clean it out. Is there anything on the side that you want to point out? Well, I mean, yeah, it's obvious. The, the hooks are a little different on this. The other one had a bar that went across and the, um, which you set can see, screws, right. it had hooks with set screws. Uh, I never put the screws in mine. It just kind of flopped around and they, they hang. When you go to take your utensils off of there, uh, they would move with the utensil and you, they, you'd actually have to grab the hook to pull them off. So these are solid on there. When you grab your utensil, it'll pop right off. That's, I mean, that's what I notice on there. That's, that's a little different. Um, coming down here, I'm seeing two things. One, the bucket's black, which goes with the whole blacked out theme. The other thing that I'm seeing, which is very cool, is the bucket has a swinging latch, just like you see up here. And on that side for your, uh, for your temperature gauges, this swings down to prevent your bucket from getting pulled off. And people with pets are gonna love that because pets are, every once in a while, they might hit your bucket or try to go for it. It's not gonna fall off. On the front, you got a nice ledge logo. And one thing I'm noticing about the wheels is I have to confirm this, but I see a bearing in that wheel. I see a bushing in this wheel. I didn't even notice. So there's definitely a bearing in that wheel. Yeah, there's a bearing in there. There have always been bearings in little ones. I don't know if these are bearing wheels. I can't tell because of this cover, but I think that might be an addition is adding bearings to the, uh, the wheel hub. And I love cool. that it's blacked out. 
Exactly. It goes with the whole theme of, of blacking it out. Goes with the whole theme. Let's move on to the inside. Get in there. Grates look, look the same. No mm -hmm. change there. Drip tray, stainless steel, still pretty heavy duty. This has been cooked on, obviously. It's a little dirty, but this uh, has been tested. So one interesting thing here is uh, you could still move the heat shield. Right, the bar's not in there. The bar, just the bar's just not in there. I yeah. just don't know how the heat shield in relation now to where the, the chimney is, how that changes the heat deflection. We'll have to find that out. So you've got the same firebox, stainless steel, heat very heavy grade. And the reason why they're using stainless steel here is because they need stainless steel here. It's a, you know, high heat area. Right, steel wouldn't be ideal for that. And that's why they do it. They use, they use the stainless where it's needed. So if you guys wanna come check out the, uh, the firebox here, now this one does have the ceramic igniter in it. Not sure which one we're gonna see. Is that new uh, silicon material or the, the carbon or the, the ceramic igniter yet? But we're uh, still stainless on the Venturi box. Yep, Venturi firebox, stainless rails. Again, where it's needed. But I can tell you, just, just look at the welds on this, Ron, and look at, just look how sealed this is. It looks great. The construction on these is really nice. These are made in a whole new factory that GMG spent a lot of time searching and finding somebody to work with that'll build a really high quality smoker. So you're gonna see a lot better build quality on these new smokers and it's all about innovating and trying to work out little things in the past that they wanted to change, just like the pellet dump door. I, we've seen three different changes on that. I think now it's a really cool design. It's smart, it keeps it dry inside, and uh, I'm excited about that. But we haven't even mentioned the biggest change. So the biggest change, guys, is the paint. This is a hard enamel paint it is the best paint that you can get in the industry. Highly tested. Highly tested. Uh, how many hours was it? Don't ask me, I can't 5, remember. 5,000 hours, but I think it was mentioned. With under, UV light? Under UV, straight UV light. The sun doesn't give off 100% UV light. So right. it, this is gonna last for years. It's not gonna rust, it's not gonna pit. You it, can still scratch it if you it, hit it hard. Right, and so you can take see care of it. This this grill's been through some stuff, so there's a it's, couple scratches it's on, been it. on it. It's been on the road. This is the only. <laughs> I think this is about the only ledge in the U.S. that exists right now. Is this smoker? We right. have it. But yes, this paint is what Napoleon grills use. This is top of the line paint. It doesn't get any better for grill paint. It doesn't. Not at all. And that's a huge deal because there's been issues in the past with, with paint and the difference between grills and smokers, smokers deal with a lot of grease and creosote and it's, it's very acidic on the paint and it eats the paint away. So having a really high quality paint is important. And I know a lot of people have based their decision on which smoker that they were gonna go with, sometimes on just the paint. So in this case, this is the best paint that you're gonna get on a smoker. So if you're trying to decide, it's no longer. It's no longer a decision because they've went with the most expensive paint that they can put on this, along with the quality testing that's been done on this. And the price point. The price point, again, you they, know, we're talking. It's barely moved right? I, with I believe, all of the changes that they've made. I believe this one is now $9.99. Of course, without the accessories, we're looking right. at nine ninety nine for the ledge, eleven ninety nine for the peak. That's great, and I mean, where they are in the market as far as quality and their price, it's unbeatable. 
Nobody's touching it. You can go to your big box stores and look at the ones that are in there. They're light. They're not as heavy as what these are. And when you're talking about weight, it's the construction materials. A lot of that is just on the side of the box when it comes to weight. You can tell these are strong. You got quality paint now. The igniters have been updated. There are so many changes on these that over time and dealing with customers and listening to customers, this is, I don't even know how many versions now because there's been little changes over time. Right. But this thing has been tested and tested and tested. This is here to stay. This is quality control at the max because they've listened to customers. They listen to every one of you viewers is feedback and check out our interview with jason baker he is he's the man at gmg so he's passionate about the dealer network he's passionate about customers changes we couldn't deal with a better company and at this time where big corporations are taking over companies you'll see it in our interview that we do with jason it's a family business things are personal to him his dealers are personal to him. He was with us when we first started. He spent over an hour on the phone with us. It, you don't get that anymore. It just doesn't happen. Right. I mean, he's spent the time. He's gone through a lot of things. They had lawsuits and COVID and, and all these things that they've had to deal with and getting a new distributor. And this is and this is what we get. We don't get a bankruptcy. We get this. Right. This is GMG. Better. Better. Guys, thank you for watching. Again, this is Don from Dr. Smoke. Hit that like, subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Follow us. Follow us. We've got a lot the of videos. The newest of the new. A lot of videos coming up. Thank you.